you might have seen plenty of plant watering system on the internet. Here I am with one but with a little twist in it. Yes, it is solar powered and also it can be operated using a RF remote. Sounds cool isn't it? This project allows you to water plants utilizing the solar power and most importantly at ease. I am Frank Donald from Gadgetronics. Let's see how to make this project. In this video you will see four sections basically. First one will be the explanation about functional blocks of this project. A brief about circuits and its working will be the second. Third will be all about assembling the circuit board. And final one will be setting up this project to water plants or garden. A portable RF remote is the first block of this whole project. This will be the activator and it is powered by a battery. The rest of the blocks can be termed as say receiver unit. These entire receiver unit will be powered by the solar panel only. Then comes the under voltage lockout circuit which basically locks out other block when voltage from the panel is less than the threshold. Receiver block is nothing but the RF receiver module. Controlling block however used as an activator or controller for the water pump. This further leads to water pump and then to the plants. This RF transmitter and receiver is going to be the heart of the system. It operates under 433 MHz frequency and I am quite sure you can find it easily online. I will attempt to briefly explain three circuits used for this project in this video. However, if it is unclear, kindly refer to the article link given in the video description. I have documented the entire project with supporting calculations in that article so it's worth taking a look. Right, this is the circuit diagram of RF remote unit where a 9 volt battery is used to power the whole module. 7805 drops the voltage to 5 volt which is rated for RF remote module. Push button is the activator where it is connected to ground since the module input pins are active low and a pull up resistor is used to avoid false triggering. Now let's build the circuit. I have picked general PCB board for this purpose. Let me just quickly arrange the components now. Solder the components to the board. I am going to skip this, it will be a bit boring. Mark the pins correctly once done with the soldering. It is very much necessary to make sure you don't spoil the board with the wrong connections. Cut out this board and your transmitter circuit board will be finally ready. The receiver unit starts with choosing a solar panel. This is important since voltage and current from the panel should power RF module, controller unit and water pump. Ratings of this solar panel is marked behind it and as you can see it is rated 12 volt and 5 watts with a current of 417 milliamps. This is sufficient to power my water pump and other blocks. Selecting the motor holds priority since this will consume more current than any other block. Here this is a 6 volt motor which consumes 130 to 150 milliamps when pumping water. Since this only accounts for about 35% of current rating of solar panel, this will be a good fit to use in this project. Be sure to check your motor's current consumption under load since motors tend to be different in nature. Also attach your pipe outlet to the motor in order to draw water to the plants. This under voltage lockout circuit basically locks out rest of the blocks when voltage from solar panel is less. This is needed since voltage from solar panel can be unstable under cloudy conditions. Powering the receiver without using this might turn on and off the circuit making it extremely unstable. Coming back to the circuit, this is basically a schema trigger. Voltage from panel VIN is divided using a divider for comparing with reference voltage. The reference voltage is generated from a 5.1 volt Zener diode. These three resistors fix the upper and lower threshold for the trigger. 
the VIN and reference voltage will be then be compared and output switches accordingly to drive the P-channel MOSFET. We have test from MOSFET. Uh, this goes to the 7805 and 7806 regulator which feeds XOR gate and ULN IC respectively. RF receiver module will be active whenever powered on. This will make the motor pump water when powered on without any data input from the transmitter. Therefore, XOR gate was used as a controller in order to avoid this scenario. Output from XOR gate will drive the ULN IC which in turn will pump the water. So all the circuit explanations are finally over. Let's assemble this receiver section now. I have started soldering the components into the general PCB. This is going to take pretty much long so let me just get to the end of it. I am almost done with the soldering just getting few finishing touches to it. And I have one last thing to do, mark all the pins for easy identification. And that's it, I am done with building the receiver unit. Let's assemble the remote unit. I need to make this remote really portable. For that purpose, I have sticked the RF module, built circuit and battery in a plastic box using double sided tape. Now this will be really portable and easy to use. For the receiver, I have chose a box with a lid since it needs protection from sun, rain and other weather conditions. Stick the module and the circuit board to the box as you did with the remote. Once assembled, close the lid and your receiver unit is finally ready. Setting up the project will be easy and straightforward. Fill water in a bucket or other storage mediums and drop the motor in it. Connect the motor terminals to the receiver circuit. Place the water outlet to the plant pot. Now connect the power terminals from solar panel to the receiver circuit. And that's it, your project setup is finally ready. With everything done now, let's grab the remote and water some plants. Hope this video was useful to you. Do leave a thumbs up if you like this video and share your feedback with us. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.